Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In the previous episode we we sort of lost Jeb, but but not to something that was at all explainable, right? The capsule just disappeared on us, let's say. And so I want to begin by testing out whether that was simply a glitch of the program or whether there's something systemic about this that uh, maybe the antennas attached wrong, maybe uh, I shouldn't be reducing the ablative shielding like I have. So this is the exact same rocket, no changes made, no mods updated. And uh, I originally wanted to create a Kerbal named Expendable Kerbal, but uh, for some reason the program reads Expendable Kerbal as a scientist. Um, I don't know what actually determines whether a Kerbal is labeled a pilot, scientist, or engineer in the persistent file so I decided that uh, the other way to go would be simply to uh, send Jeb so I restored Jeb for this specific mission and he's going to be riding the exact same rocket and we will see the question is you see in the previous episode I launched uh, the Vimes on the Telemon 3 to test out the capsule right with a remote controller and I conducted that entire mission and then came back and tried to launch this one now, with all the mods that I have, uh, and the fact that I was doing physical time warp and all sorts of other things, that could have caused some sort of issue and uh, led to the glitch. Uh, you know, RAM space getting a little bit tight and all that, because uh, the RAM usage actually builds up when you have uh, mods, especially with uh, the texture uh, management mods and stuff like that, uh, that tends to make the RAM build up over time and cause glitches down the road if you play for a lengthy amount of time. So I'm going to test that theory out that this is uh, freshly started and so I'm going to launch Jeb in this mission and see if it works this time. Okay and of course if we lose Jeb we lose Jeb that's the end of it and we'll just have to move on from there. Alright uh, not concerned about the funds really we could launch this 80 times without any problem so I'm not going to uh, even consider whether we're going to recoup funds if it's successful or not. That's not an issue. Okay, so let's go. Okay, here we are. Same launch site, of course. So everything should be, should be the same. And we are going to find out whether it was the game or it is something about this design. Okay, and I'll try and keep the launch profile approximately the same. All right, here we go, Jeb. Let's see if you can survive this or not. Okay, well, I mean, obviously the key point is close to where we lost him last time. So, I'll, I'll see you there. Okay, we're now in the supersonic regime. Uh, if something is gonna go wrong, it'll happen between here and 50 kilometers. We see the command pod going up to 100 degrees Celsius here. Now 200 degrees. Let's see if there's an indication that the antenna... Now the real cone shoot is not as hot. The antennae are not as hot as the pod itself. The pod itself is double the temperature of the antennae at this point. I'm not going to intentionally try and save Jeb, so I'm going to, like I said, continue with the same launch profile I did last time. Or approximately so. Nothing is as hot as the pod right now. and the same result. I, I think we'll just abort this. So it's just gonna fall into the Atlantic now. Um, yeah, alright, so we have our answer. Uh, we have the answer that the, it's the pot itself, it's nothing else. The pot itself was much more overheated than anything else at the top of the stack. All right. And so I'm going to adjust the blade of shielding and we're going to launch again without a Kerbal. Uh, 
No, let's see. Let's hire somebody. Let's hire somebody and uh, let's pump up the ablator shielding, adjust the rocket so that I can bear the extra mass of the ablator shielding, and uh, we will see whether we can launch a Kerbal into space, and whoever it is uh, gets a chance to be the first Kerbal in space. All right. So, hiring time. We have Hada Kerman, Elliot Kerman, Tom Bill Kerman, Bill Rick Kerman, and Raynan Kerman. Uh, as our potential pilots. I think we need somebody with substantial courage for this one and perhaps a substantial stupidity given what happened to Jeb. So uh, I think Tompel is the guy for us. Probably should pick up Elliot at some point. So the theory is, my theory is, that the... well, I didn't uh, test this antenna actually. Hmm. But this antenna was on the the other pod. Uh, the one that we launched previously, so that's a, that's a point. Okay, um, yeah, a blader shielding. That's our theory, and uh, we now have a victim, if you will, because this is a theory that might not work out. Now, increasing the blader shielding on the pod has not really substantially changed our situation. Uh, we still get into orbit on three stages. It's, uh, let's see, how much does it reduce the delta V by, oh, let's say close to 200. So a little bit less maneuvering for Tomble Kerman, but I think uh, it's still okay for orbit and everything else. Okay, here we go. SAS on, throttle up. So if Tomble Kerman survives, we will find out that it was the tweaking of the ablator shielding that caused the problem for Jeb and uh, otherwise if I'm wrong about the ablative shielding Tom Bill Kerman I'm, I'm so sorry but uh, we have to have some way of figuring these things out uh, note uh, the re-entry 6.4.0 I think it's 6.5.0 actually for some reason the number isn't changed but uh, not using the alternative heating model or uh, or of course the parachute warning but that's a totally irrelevant issue. All right, Tompa looks ready to go. So here we go. I sort of feel like this has become a lot more Kerbal suddenly, in that uh, our Kerbals are now at much greater risk than I have ever put them in before. But I don't see any other way to test it. If I try to test it unmanned, I have to put an unmanned controller on top, and that might change things. So, if I change variables too much, it's not going to be an accurate test. Okay, we are past the sound barrier, and the temperature is 120 degrees Celsius. We'll keep monitoring it. It is getting a bit hot. But let's see, let's compare it to the other things on the pod. It is hotter than the than the nose cone. The parachute really. That's three hundred. Let's check this antenna. Oh, this antenna. That's less as well. I'm gonna keep pitch high. It's not going to help. The temperature is too high. I'm shutting down the engines. It didn't matter. Oh, poor Tomble. Okay, well, so a blade shooting wasn't the issue. The antennae are cooler than the pod. But I can try and remove them. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're losing a lot more curls than I ever have in the series before. Uh, I mean, just two. Uh, two, But I mean, two out of two right now, right? Um, this is... 
quite a thing. Okay, well, anyway. Well, it's that time again. Let's pick up Elliot, Haddock, Raynand, Billrick. Oh, we can't pick up Billrick. But anyway, we've got uh, we've got three new pilots. Oh boy. Well, heck, uh, let's let's just dump the antennae, right? Uh, the pod does it have an antenna of its own? I don't think so. It's got it's it's got an active heat shield too, which is sort of weird. So it doesn't just have the blade of shielding, it's got its own active heat shield and still can't keep itself cool. I'm also going to add an unmanned controller. I mean, I'm going to send them up with the configuration exactly like I did the test, except we got to have a Kerbal in, basically. Now the unmanned controller does have communication. It's got 300 kilometers, but it doesn't matter. We're going to have a Kerbal in anyway. So it's going to be like this. Delta V-wise, we have enough to get to orbit, and we should be able to deorbit him. Obviously, we can't rescue a Kerbal like this. We don't have the Delta V for that. But getting into orbit and getting him back, fine. I don't think we have any problems. And it is going to be a manned mission, a uh, crewed mission. I really shouldn't say manned mission all the time. Um, let's have Haddock go. He's next up. All right, well... Uh, now we've got full ablative shielding. We've got no antennae, nothing obvious. Uh, is there any way that this fairing could be doing something? Stuff inside here causing a problem. The struts. And really, I don't see any need for the antennae when we've got a, got a Kerbal in to control it. So we'll dump the antennae anyway. My goal now is to have our Kerbal survive. That's, that's it. So, whatever works. I mean, not that that wasn't my goal before, but I was also testing things out, so... Um, testing out theories is no longer a priority. I, I don't care what caused it. All I care about is having a successful mission this time. And I think this is the best configuration to allow that to happen. Okay, uh, our Delta V doesn't seem to be reading quite right. Let me just make sure we're fueled up properly. Uh, that MacJeb sometimes has this problem. Yeah, we seem to be fueled all right. Everything seems nominal. Electric charge is depleting a bit, but that's fine. Okay, all right. How to Kerman? We'll try and stop the engines earlier if the temperature is going up too much. Uh, definitely want to save Haddock. All right, here we go. Okay, we're now past the speed of sound. Let's see. Command pod, negative 36 degrees Celsius. So that is nominal. Parachute on top is definitely warming up. Pod is not. So the parachute certainly wasn't the issue. Well, we've got an avionics package in the way right now. So the avionics package might be actually weathering some of the, or acting as insulation somehow. But the point is that the pod is, is cool. And now Haddock Kerman is, is likely to be our first Kerbal in orbit. Our first Kerbal in space as well. But let's not uh, speak too soon here. Let me make sure the parachute is all right. Well, it's cooling down even, so no problem there. I'm gonna go to 35 before separating the boosters.
Okay, ready, booster set. Oh, that's not too bad. No, that was a good set. Okay, looking good. Delta V is fine. Plenty of buffer. Oh. Wait a minute. We were supposed to be launching from French Guiana. Why did it switch us back to Cape Canaveral? Oh dear. Okay, well, I mean, that, that doesn't cause any problems, but I wonder what did that. Nothing should have done that. I didn't even go to the... the tracking station. I mean, there's clearly Florida, and the Bahamas, and Cuba. Huh, one strange thing after another. Didn't even know where I was launching from. Shows what good my diagnoses might be. And all's good. Separate stage three. Stage three has some wiggles, but it's got gimbling, so it should be fine. So, uh, the conclusion is the antennae. I mean, that's, well, the antennae primarily. Uh, possibly putting the avionics package between the parachute and the pod, but probably the cumulative uh, effects of the antenna, even though each one did not reach a temperature that was particularly hot, uh, certainly not enough for each one to actually get destroyed, uh, it managed to have a cumulative effect on the pod such that the pod reached, uh, went above its maximum temperature. Uh, so, one thing we concluded was not tweaking the ablative shielding. I think that's pretty fair to say. Not that that really mattered too much. It was The tweak uh, di certainly didn't make a difference in terms of whether this pod could get into space or not, or return, certainly. Okay, there we go. 307-204. Got a little bit of juice left. Alright. But uh, we will now separate. Oop. A little bit of an impact there. Let's just point prograde, shall we? Okay, and take Smart SS off that job, actually. Okay. Well, now he's on his orbital fuel. I'm going to actually. Uh, not disable the RCS port, but disable the HTT, uh, HTP, the hydrogen peroxide, on the pod so that that can be used to control the pod on the way down. Uh, this guy has got 464 meters per second. We can ignite that engine. All right. It doesn't show up the fuel here, but I think it's okay. Uh, test burn. Yeah. All good. So how did Kerman, the first Kerbal in space in this series, uh, I think a crew report is called for. It's very round. Okay, and it looks like that's biome dependence, so I'm going to keep that data, but... Oh, no, uh, we can transmit that. Oh, can we? No. Um, hmm. Good question. Are we in communication range with the range of this 300 kilometers? I don't think so, but... Uh, let's see... Review reports. Yeah, okay, we actually are in connection somehow. Okay. So we sent that off. Um... I think we can just proceed. We're approaching Western Africa here. Uh, lost communication there, but we can still get the crew port without transmitting it. So let's see. Uh, crew port from space above Kerbin's grasslands. Maybe if you get out and push. Not too sure I understand that. I assume that we can't transmit. So let's review report. Well, let's just keep report. Okay, let's wait until we're in transmission range. Probably South Africa will 
do the trick there. There we go. Okay, science added. Is this another biome? We're still over land, I'm sure. Highlands, okay. Transmit that. Let's have Haddock make a full orbit and then concern ourselves with bringing him back down. But let's let's have him pass the nighttime side. There might be other biomes along the way here, but can't really see where we are anyway. Probably not too many, judging from our previous missions. There aren't too many biomes configured for Earth. Uh, let's just pass Cape Canaveral, and then we will start making making the maneuver for descent. I think 70 worked out fine. 70 kilometers. Periapsis. We will aim for a Pacific splashdown. Obviously the easiest target by far. I do not want to hit any mountains, any rough terrain, anything like that. Okay, had a Kerman. Let us aim to bring you back down. Alright, Richburn. This is gonna take a while. I can dump the service module now, but I'm going to activate the H uh, HTP up here first. Um, wait. Okay, that's not configured right at all. Let's be careful here. Alright, service module off. <sighs> I hate when I press spacebar and it doesn't do what I want it to do. Let me decouple here. Alright. Service module is away. We are now on the... RCS system of the pod alone. Obviously, plenty of ablator shielding given the last time we tried this. Perfectly nominal descent so far. Temperature is going past 800, expecting ablator shielding depletion now. Would like ablator shielding to deplete a little bit faster, really. Uh, perhaps starting at about 600 and cooling us off a little bit more so that we don't exceed a thousand degrees Celsius after all. We recall uh, going past a thousand with this capsule isn't exactly the nicest thing to do. We've been through that, haven't we? Um, let's try and angle this a little bit better using the RCS. And cooling off. Didn't take much of their shielding. I don't think our G-forces got particularly high. Let me just quickly check. Uh, 5.4 only. So, uh, and that's because we had the RCS Anglos properly and everything. So, 5.4 G's, not bad. Out of Kerman. Comparatively gentle ride, I assume. And RCS off. Okay, there we go. Let's have SAS off for now. Okay, full parachute deployment. And that brings us to 6.8 meters per second. Uh, pretty harsh, but should be safe for a capsule like this. And no splash effect. Okay, recover vessel. Okay, well, we got a little capsule back we more importantly got had a Kerman back he gained two experience and advanced to level one and that fulfills our contract I believe uh, oh it doesn't even have the contract here anymore uh, Kerbal space flight Kerbin orbital we've got the benefits of that uh, not much detriment in terms of our reputation for losing both Jeb and Tombo uh, well and what can we say? Uh, we mourn the loss of Jebediah and Tombo Kerman, and their their efforts have have taught us some valuable lessons in in designing crude space capsules. In particular, don't put antennae on the capsule. So yeah, we're going to have to figure that out. I hope 
putting the antennae on the service module section isn't going to cause any problems. We do have the whole heat shield in the way, so maybe it'll be all right in that case. Uh, we will need antennae sometimes to transmit data back, uh, for instance, on lunar missions. But yeah, I think uh, that'll do it for me this time. We've we've done the thing I set out to do. Uh, next time, those are very valuable. Position a satellite in Molniya orbit around Kerbin, Earth, and that's a million? Huh. Okay, so we'll have to think about doing something like that, all right? So, with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.